Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Pixel for Life video tutorial. My name is Steven and today we are going to be creating business cards. I'm excited, I hope you are as well. Now we don't have any affiliation with them, but my favorite way of creating business cards is to use Vistaprint. Now you can go ahead and create your own template, but for this example I'm going to be using the one that comes on the Vistaprint website. So to find it, what you want to do is click on where it says premium business card, click that and then click on upload a complete design Then choose whether or not you want horizontal or a vertical business card and then click on download a template for premium business card and then choose whether you want a Photoshop or an Adobe Illustrator template I'm using Photoshop go ahead and extract that mother and then open it up in whatever program you're using once it loads don't get scared these colorful markings are actually there to help you uh, what the red trim mark means is this This is like the safe area that you don't really want any content to go out of. This is so when they cut the cards, anything out here, this is kind of like their give or take area. That it might be a little bit inside of this, might be outside of it. So if you have an image that is going to be larger than the business card, let's say a background, you want it to go over this trim area. So when they trim it, there's no white spots showing. And then the blue safe margin is what you don't want your text to go out of. This is kind of uh, still another trim leeway area. So then uh, if their trim is a little bit larger than that red area, it's not gonna cut off your text. So you kinda wanna keep it within that. So you can delete that layer or hide it. And then if you turn on your guides, you'll see that the guides line up to that um, the margin area. Now you can go ahead and get started on your design. I have an idea of what I'm after. I would recommend maybe doing some sketches and see what fits on a business card and what looks nice. Uh, I'm just gonna have my name on the left side and then my title, I just put lead designer. Honestly, the most difficult part with a business card is figuring out what font size looks nice because it's such a small area. So what I would do is get a couple of font sizes and then make sure you print it, before, print it at home before you send it off to Vistaprint because you'll be surprised how small font looks. I've tested this out already, and with the font that I'm using, the sizes that I use are perfect for what I want. Here I'm just grabbing a logo that I want to use somewhere on the business card. I have my name on the left side, and then on the right side I'm going to have my phone number, which is a fake one. As you see in movies, it's 555-0196. Then I throw in my email address, website, and then put whatever you want. Again, this font size I have tested and it's perfect for what I need. Now I'm just gonna steal some colors off that logo that I am using. Um, one thing to also keep in mind is to print out a sample after you choose colors because sometimes colors will look really nice on your monitor, but once you print it, it's either too dark or too light and you're gonna wanna change that to make it look perfect. The printer can be pretty cruel, so what looks good on your monitor does not mean that it's gonna look great when it's printed. Here I just modify the baseline to make the spacing look a little bit more presentable. Then to fill up this big open space between the left and the right side, I just create a vertical line, one pixel, and then create and then make it uh, a light gray. And that helps to even out the two ends. Now this line is not centered, it's kind of just visually centered. So if you're a pixel perfect kind of person, you might want to mess with that a little bit more than I did. I'm just pushing around the text a little bit before I put on the final touches. So to finish off the front, I'm just going to add a quick bar to the bottom. I fill it with a dark gray that I stole from the font color. And then I add a drop shadow, which has 100% hardness, and it's only a few pixels wide. And I made that the green of the text. So what you might want to do is print this out, as always. I'm going to stress that over and over, and make sure that the width of this line is to your liking. One thing that I failed to mention earlier is that this document is not a web document, which is normally 72 uh, DPI or whatever. This is a resolution of 300, and you're going to want to almost always have it at about 300 when you're printing something. That's just a lot more dots per inch. Some may argue that 300 is a little too extreme, but that's kind of the common practice for printing stuff. So now I just group all these front files into a folder called Front and then create a new layer and this will be starting on the back side of it. Here I'm just going to have a nice big font that says Pixel for Life and then underneath that is going to be a tagline. I just made it up. You have my permission to say anything that you want on your business cards. You're welcome. 
I already know what sizes I need this to be and what font I want to use. For the Pixel for Life, I'm using the font that I wrote my name in. And then for the tagline, I am using the font that I used for the phone number and all that. I am just going to fast forward through this part because I was messing with the colors and I ended up not using it, but I thought I would leave it in there because, hey, you should see my mistakes. The reason I decided not to go with this is because it didn't seem to match the rest of the card. I wanted to keep the back kind of light. Here I got the idea to throw my logo in it on the corner, kind of like my portfolio website that I'm working on that I hope I finish sometime soon, but that gave me the idea to lighten up the background. Lightening up the background required me to change the color for of the Pixel for Life font and then I also found out that the logo on the bottom left was a little too vibrant so I brought down the opacity. By doing that it gave me the idea to duplicate this all over the one side of the card. So I created a smart object so if I ever have to go back and edit this logo it will be quick and easy. And then one thing to keep in mind is to make sure that the logo or your image goes off the side of the card. It goes past that trim area. So when they cut it, there's not gonna be any white spaces. I just start duplicating this, resizing it. I didn't wanna rotate it because I wanted to keep the same straight lines, the directions that the logo was going. I just kept on going until it made me smile. So now the front and the back of our card is complete. Now, one last step is to save this out so the front is one file and the back is one file. So to do that, I just hide the, well actually delete the front side and then control shift S or whatever, save as a new file, save that as business card front. And then I control shift Z to step back. And I did that until that folder came back. And then I deleted the front and kept the back folder and then did the same step, save as business card back. That way you are left with three files. One is just the front of the card and one is just the back of the card. Here you can see the files that I'm talking about on my desktop and these are the ones that we are going to be uploading to Vistaprint. All right, now comes the part that actually is a little bit trickier than it should be. It is uploading your images to Vistaprint to create your own custom business card. So feel free to hold my hand as we go through this so you don't get lost and let's get started. So click on the choose file button right over here and click on the front of your business card, which is gonna have your name and your contact information. Now we just wait for it to upload. Here we can see a preview of what our business card looks like, and then you can click on next. Here you can add some content if you want. I'm just gonna leave it blank because we did all the content in Photoshop. Here is me trying to figure out how to upload the background image, or the back image of the card. Really confusing, and I'm not sure why. So what you end up having to do is on the bottom right, click on the button that says Backside. Now on the left side, you can click on the button that says Choose File, and then you can choose the PSD that has your background image. Once again, we have to wait for it to upload. In this window, it allows you to crop the photo if you want, but since we made this to size, I'm just going to leave it as is and click OK. Now you can accept that online proof agreement, and then click Next, and that's all there is to it. And I'm just going to end the tutorial there. I'm not going to go ahead and order these because the information is wrong anyways. But um, one thing you might want to do is look through this advertisement that makes you click through because sometimes there's some stuff that you can get for free, like free pens or a stamper. You can get some pretty nice things and it'll have your name on it. So it's kind of cool to have. I mean, who would enjoy a pen with your own name or website on it? Feel free to say some nice things about me below. And if you have any critiques, don't say them. No, I'm just kidding. I am happy to hear any critiques that you might have. If you have any tutorial requests, leave it below or send me a PM. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.